So this weekend, we're excited. We're jumping in technically into our first week of Christmas at Hope City. Next weekend's gonna be amazing. And then the 23rd, we're gonna be gathering here across all locations. We're gonna be gathering here on the 23rd for the gift of hope. It's gonna be a Christmas experience. Music, it's gonna be amazing. We have a three o'clock, five o'clock, and seven o'clock. So make sure you're making a note to be here on the 23rd. And then the 24th, Christmas Eve, we're gonna be here and across all of our other locations as well doing our candlelight Christmas experience. And then Sunday, the 25th, Christmas Day, y'all can wake up, hang out with your family, and we have an online-only Christmas family experience that is going to be incredible that we're excited about. How many of y'all ready to dive into the Word today? Um, that was, thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. How many of y'all wanna to grow today? Okay, great. So last weekend, we talked about vision. It was Vision Sunday. I encourage you to go back to our YouTube channel and never stop growing. I had a guy call me from New Mexico, his name's Trey. Him and Callie are watching right now. And he said, we watched Sunday night, we re-watched it because we wanna to continue to grow. If you're a hearer only and you're just sitting in the room or one of our locations, and you're not taking down notes, statistically, you only retain 5%. So all you're gonna remember is, it's my birthday, amen. That's it, 5%, it's 5%. But if you take down notes, your retention rate goes up to 35%. And if you take down notes and go back and apply them, Actually, 90 to 95% retention, which is amazing. Elbow the person next to you and say, don't stop growing. Come on, don't stop growing. So we encourage you to go back. Vision Sunday was next level. Go back and watch it on our YouTube channel. But we're two weeks away. Every year on my birthday, we're two premium weeks away from Christmas. And the heaviness settles in for those who have yet to shop. How many of you guys have started your Christmas shopping? Okay, okay. How many of y'all have not started? Yeah, that's most of it. How many of y'all are done? Okay, we wanna consult with you afterwards. We need to have a meeting. But we're two weeks away from Christmas, and you know, this time of year is exciting, and y'all act like you like things like eggnog. Nobody likes it. It tastes like paint thinner. You know what I mean? Like, I love eggnog. Like, no, you don't. You're just like, oh, I love it. It's Christmas. You don't even like it. But also, this time of year for some can be just amazing and full of joy, but for others... They say that depression goes up, anxiety goes up, statistics of panic attacks go up. And for some, this time of year, the enemy loves to try to get into your life and rob you of peace. So this weekend, we're going to talk about peace. Look at the person next to you say, we're going to talk about peace. Come on. And here's our prayer, that maybe there's some broken pieces in your life. Our prayer is today that you'll swap the broken pieces for his peace. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you give us ears to hear you. Give us eyes to see you. Most importantly, God, we need a heart ready to understand and receive. We want to soak it up so that we can walk out better, set free, changed. We don't want to walk out the same way we came in. So God, we ask for a deposit today. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to make room. Pull out anything in our lives, God, that might be a lid, that might be keeping us from growing so that you can deposit all of you and none of us. In Jesus' name, say amen. The Bible has a lot to say about peace. It actually appears 329 times all throughout the Bible. Peace is something, this is amazing, this is liberating. Peace is something that all of us have access to. It doesn't matter your educational status, it doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank, maybe you got a lot, maybe your money's funny, it doesn't matter. If you're a son, if you're a daughter, and you've committed your life to Jesus, I'm telling you, peace belongs to all of us. We have access, and the peace of God is different than the peace of the world. Biblical peace is more than just the absence of conflict. In the world, in the natural people would say peace is internal tranquility. Sounds like a candle scent at Yankee Candle. You're like, internal tranquility. Oh, I don't smell. No, but biblical peace is more than just the absence of conflict. It's because of God's grace and his mercy that we don't deserve that we can have wholeness and completeness. Biblical peace is not something that we can create on our own. And I'm gonna unpack this a little bit more. We all have opportunities in the natural to create moments of peace. We do. But biblical peace is completely different. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, that peace is actually a fruit of the Spirit that we have access to. Look at the person next to you and say, we have access to this. Come on. God is, God is the ultimate source of peace, but in Isaiah 9, 6, it also describes Jesus as the Prince of Peace. So here's our prayer this weekend as you're leaning in and you're listening. Our prayer this weekend is if there's any area of your life that feels hopeless. Number one, it's under the influence of a lie. Because there is hope and his name is Jesus. 
But if there's any area of your life that you're currently walking through that has no peace, our prayer today is that you can swap out those broken places and broken pieces and walk out filled up with the peace of God. Come on, if you receive it, say, I receive that. Because we're believing that God will heal and reveal his presence to you this weekend so that we can not only get through the season, these holiday seasons, surviving, no, 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 thriving. Like happy, like walking into a room, like why is she so happy? She has peace, come on. Why, why does he walk into a room and he's an atmosphere changer? He's not a thermometer that tells the temperature. He's a thermostat that adjusts and changes the temperature. Why? Because he has peace. Come on, he has peace. And then this is our prayer, that we're going to end the year as a church family stronger. Come on, do like this. Say, I'm going to end out stronger. Psalms 29, 11. This is the word, not my opinion. It says, the Lord gives strength to his people. That's us. When you walk in relationship with Jesus, Galatians 2, 20, no longer are you who lives, but Christ who lives and dwells in you. Not religious experience or a religious encounter. No, no, a relationship where daily you're walking and living and talking with Jesus himself through relationship, through his word. It's speaking to you and you're in his word. You're worshiping, you're praying, and you have a relationship. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with, come on, say it out loud, peace. If you've been around Hope City for any amount of time, you know your boy likes acronyms. I love this acronym of the word peace. Placing expectation and confidence eternally. Peace sustains us when we recognize that all of this, this life, finances, family, climate, all the pressure we deal with is on God, not on us. That, that should be liberating. Because 1 Peter 5, 7 says for us to cast all of our cares. The Amplified says all your cares, your worries, your concerns, watch this, once and for all. But you know what we end up doing? We compartmentalize our pain. We give God so much. We're like, hey, God, I mean, you're the creator of all things, and you got to deal with all these other billions of people, so I'll just hold on to this, almost like a badge of honor. I'll just hold on to this and try to process it on my own. I'll go to Google it. I'll Google this or WebMD it to try to figure it out when God's saying, hey, hey, all your cares, all your concerns, all your worries, I want you to cast your cares on me, amplified version, once and for all. But when we compartmentalize our pain, here's what we do. We give him a little bit and then we try to take it back. We give him a little bit or then we step back in and say, hey, God, do you remember me? He's like, mm, yeah, I made you. Yeah, yeah. I shaped and molded you in my image. Yes, I knew. Okay, I was just checking back in to see if you were gonna take care of this. This is my challenge for you to unlock peace. Stop monitoring what you've already placed in God's hands. If you place it in his hands, he is the one that can fix it, heal it, restore it, deliver it, all the above, because he is the great physician. Somebody say amen. amen. The truth is the pressure is off. Our responsibility, when we know that God is big enough to handle all of it, our responsibility is to simply draw near to him. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Hebrews chapter four, verse 16 says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we would receive mercy and find grace and help in time of need. So again, we draw near to him. We obey him. We shape our character around his will. And this is what happens. He will then take care of everything else. Peace is placing expectation and confidence eternally. Because an eternal mindset relinquishes control so that God can be God and we don't have to try to be. That's good news. There's times in life where we have no peace. There's times in life where we struggle with wrestling with things that are maybe coming at you because there's some things you can't pre-pray, pre-meditate, or prepare for. It just happens. The enemy loves it. That's why the Bible talks about us being sober-minded. That's why the Bible talks about us being alert. Because the enemy is real and he really doesn't like you. Some of you are like, oh, you're kind of coming in hot. Like, no, he's, he's, he, he's after the assignment, the call, the purpose. He's after what God has and wants to start and fulfill through your life. So he knows if I can rip her off and rob him of his joy and mess with his confidence, not only will I take his strength, but I'll rip him off or her off and all the people connected to their purpose. In my life, I'll just put this back on me. In my life, the moments that I have felt like I had no peace is when I got in the way. Where's all the fixers at? Come on, you're like, you're like hey, can you take care of this? And you're like, all right, get out of the way. Let me take care of it. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, the times in my life where I wrestled with where is my peace is when I got in the way. 
when I tried to fix everything and handle everything and navigate everything in my own strength, I just simply could not find peace in those moments. John chapter three, verse 30 says it this way. He must become greater. I must become less. What does that mean? It means you allow him to be God. You take your cares, concerns, worries, you go to him, and then you allow Matthew 6, as you seek first his kingdom, it says all these things, you allow him, when you take it to him, to, to then add the clarity, the wisdom, the joy, the confidence, the perseverance, the fight, everything you need when you get in his presence. It's all about him. It's not about us. So biblical peace versus peace we can kind of find on our own. This is what Jesus says about the topic in John 14, 27. He said, peace I leave with you. This is great. My peace I give you. Y'all, that's a gift. If you're taking down notes, right, this is a gift. My peace I give you. My peace I, I leave with you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Jesus made it super crystal clear that true peace comes from him, not from the world. I said a moment ago, this isn't the kind of peace you can Google. This isn't the kind of peace that you can purchase. Like, I know, but that Gucci bag, I don't know. <laughs> that Prada bag. No, no, this isn't the kind of peace. Those are flickering moments. Those are moments that we just experience. Like, I got all kinds of peace. But no, no, this is the kind of peace that the world can't give and the world can't take away. This is a gift from Jesus himself. Because let me say this to somebody. Anything that's costing you your peace is too expensive. Anything that's messing with your peace, it's, it's nagging, it's constantly poking you and messing with you and robbing you of your joy. You wake up thinking about it, you wake, go to sleep thinking about it, it's causing anxiety. Anything that's costing you your peace is way too expensive. Jesus said this is a gift, not as the world can give. I've been talking about temporary moments of peace. I think we can all relate to these. You're like, okay, I got PTO. I'm going on five days of vacation, a little bit of peace. And then your wife says, but the kids are coming. You're like, okay. I had a little bit of peace there. You get really focused and you're like, this is the year I'm going to get all this unnecessary debt paid off. I'm going to do whatever I got to do. I'm going to work my job. I'll go drive for, for Uber. I'll go do whatever I got to do. I'm going to pay this debt. And then you pay that first debt off. You got no more minimum payment, a little bit of peace. You start going through Total Money Makeover, Dave Ramsey. You're like, okay, a little bit of peace, <laughs> right? You, get, you, you guys cook, you get everything set up, you clean all the dishes, the kitchen looks great, spotless. You wipe everything, you look around, like, this is great. Flip off the light, a little bit of peace. These are flickering, short-lived, fleeting moments of peace. I've shared this story before. We got a lot of new family in the room, uh, but there was a story about this guy who came home and he'd worked a, a lot of hours that week and he came home and he just wanted to relax. Well, when he walked in, it was a madhouse. Three kids under five. His wife's hair was all disheveled. One of her eyelashes was gone and she's standing there and he's like, hey, babe. She's like, don't you hey, babe me. You come help me with all of your kids. Isn't it always that way? You come help me with your kids. But when they're just angels and they're saints, they're like, these are my kids. But, but she was like, I need help. He's like, what can I do? And she's like, I just do something. Like, cook dinner, do something. And he's like, I got you. And then all of a sudden, he had an idea. So he rallied the troops. He got all of them over there. He's like, look at me, look at me, look at me. Hey, hey, look at me, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> they're all under five. Look at me. <laughs> Pay attention. Shh, listen. Uh, Daddy's going to take care of everything. I'm going to make dinner. They're like, what? We're going to eat cereal? Like, what are we going to do? Daddy's going to take care of everything. Mommy's off the clock. They're like, what's that mean? Mommy is not doing anything else tonight. So he went to his wife. He said, hey, 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 I want you to know, I got a warm bubble bath running. All you need to do is just kiss all these kids goodnight and just head down that hallway to a moment of peace. Lord, peace and tranquility. And so she was like, I just can't help it. For me, this is amazing. Like, I just can't. She, she said, she said, for that first 45 seconds walking down that hallway, she said, I felt, I hadn't felt peaceful like I could catch my breath. It was amazing. So dad lined everybody up. He's like, this is no big deal. Got some frozen pizzas, getting the oven turned on, looking in the back of the box. His wife yells, take the plastic off. You almost burnt the house down last time. He's like, I get it. So he gets all set up. He puts, he puts disposable plates in cups. Come on, because I'm not washing anything. I'm just going to put it all. And then he got distracted when he turned on Sports Center. And he lost the kids. He didn't know where they were for about 45 minutes. He sort of, oh, he came to his senses, got him back to the room. Dads are like, are you telling my story? Like, 
Did someone email you? Did my wife email you about this? So, so he's watching the sports center. He pulls the pizza out, cuts it up real quick, throws it on the plate, says, kids, come eat. He's watching the game, watching the game. About 30 more minutes goes by. He looks at the table. Plates are gone. They, they've been, the food's been eaten. Everything's been cleaned up. The kids have put themselves to bed. He says, are you joking me? I have it tough. She hardly does anything around here. <laughs> this is what he's thinking. So he sits down on the couch, like kids are in bed. This is unbelievable. I thought they were little, these kids are grown-ups. They put themselves in. And he hears his wife yelling from the bathroom. So he goes back expecting her to be thankful for all that he has done. But instead he walked into all three kids in all of their clothes, sitting in the bubble bath eating pizza. And she was off to the side like this, and he goes, I didn't know you wanted all of us in here eating together. So, Dads, we could do better than that. Come on. How about the person next to you and said, don't be like that guy. Don't be like that guy. She said, for a moment, I had a short, flickering, fleeting moment of peace. These temporary moments of peace on this earth, these flickering, short-lived moments will get you through some seasons. There's a different kind of peace that will get you through every season. My, my friend Eddie come out. Eddie, you back there? Give it up for Eddie Fresh when he walks out. Eddie, there he is. Come on. So for those of you who don't know, when I started in ministry, I started in music. So I played multiple instruments and I sang and I, I was a worship pastor for a long time. And uh, one of my first pastors is actually on the front row. Can we honor Pastor Robert? Bogart on the front row. Bobby, right there. So anyways, he knew me in this, this world where I did music and played music. And so there is a note. If you're a musician, you know this note. If you're not a musician, you're like, oh, you've kind of checked out. Focus. Okay, so there's a note called a staccato note. It is a short-lived, flickering note. It starts and it stops. It sounds like this. Amen. Not very inspirational. <laughs> Nobody's like, just get out of the way. I just, <sighs> praise God. Do it again. This is not inspiring at all. It's short-lived. It starts and it stops. Now, the room has a little bit of reverberation. You can hear it for a moment. Play a little lower. It's just not very inspiring, right? But this is the way we live our lives a lot of times. These roller coaster moments. I pay a little debt off, a little bit of peace. I, I, I got everything cleaned up, a little bit of peace. This vacation, after I got back from vacation, I needed another vacation, a little bit of peace. These moments of just flicker. Got all my Christmas shopping done. L little bit of peace. And this is the way we just kind of fumble through and survive life. But there's something else down here in the world of music. It's a pedal called a sustain pedal. And if Eddie continues to just play the staccato notes as it is, it's not very inspiring. But the moment he puts his foot on the sustain pedal, it sounds like this. And it just begins to fill the room. So then it feels moving. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. See, short-lived, flickering moments of peace get you through a couple moments. But sustaining peace, when you're sitting in the doctor's office and they say you're going to deal with this the rest of your life, there's a, a thread of sustained peace that runs through it. From the moment you were shaped and molded, Jesus wants to give you a gift, and God wants to release peace in your life. So when the money situation seems bad, there's a thread of peace. When you feel hopeless and overwhelmed, a thread of peace. It's not a peace the world can give. It's a sustained peace that only Jesus can give. Give Eddie a hand. Thank you so much, ma'am. I almost got lost in that moment. That is true. You had no right. I almost went to the bridge and everything. Get off the stage, Eddie. God's intention is that peace would be sustained throughout every season. If you're writing that down, write that down. God's intention is that peace would be sustained throughout every season. So let me ask, because I said it earlier, and maybe it resonated in your heart. Is your peace in pieces? Because if it's in pieces, it's short-lived. It's flickering. But a whole note, the sustained note, it's a completed note. Because if your piece is broken up into pieces, this is a great opportunity. And this weekend on 1211, 2022, to swap out those broken pieces and allow God to breathe sustained peace in your life. Come on, if you receive it, say, I receive it. Come on, I receive it. 
Because God intended us for live, to live a life of long, sustained peace, not affected by the changing of the winds and the waves and the obstacles and the storms of life. Sustained peace is not affected by seasons or situations. I, uh, the other day when I was studying and getting ready for the weekend, we had uh, our Freedom Conference Friday night and Saturday, so I was doing some stuff earlier in the week. Have you guys ever gone down the rabbit hole of just kind of uh, just going through YouTube, just clips, like anybody at all? All, all of y'all are really saved. You're like, mm, I only watch Chosen. Okay. <laughs> so you know, like you're just watching, you watch things that you like would never watch, like three ways to make cheese out of cashews. How can I convince a cat to wear gloves and shake my neighbor's hand? Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I stumbled upon one, people that don't uh, eat, they don't, they, they, they don't eat or drink anything, they just breathe air, they're called breatharians, that's, real, that's really real. It's a real thing. I got uh, on this one track in this rabbit hole, I started looking at how the average American drives 12,000 miles a year. Some of y'all, we live in Houston, there's a lot more than that, but average 12, but statistically, this is crazy. How many people start having car issues and complications? How many people are like, yeah, my car runs great, and then they get stuck on a train track? I was watching this, this is unbelievable. The stats are nuts, you could look it up. Um, they're all fun facts, but anyways, look it up. But 12,000 miles, average, but I watched all these clips of trains just hitting cars, people standing off to the side, like, oh, my car, like, and then trucks getting stopped, like semis, and the train just barreling through. And I started looking at just the sheer velocity and the mass and the momentum of a train. If two cars run into each other, if a car bangs into another one, both of them can sustain damage. If a train hits a car or a semi-trailer, it just obliterates it. The reason a train can destroy a car with such ease is because a train has, again, both mass and momentum. And I believe this weekend that God wants us to unlock mass and momentum in our lives. The mass or authority in our lives is built through time spent in his word, time spent in prayer, adherence to his commandments. The momentum is that we are in tune with, in tune with what he's called us to so that we would run full speed ahead to what he's called us to so that when life begins to hit us, we walk in the authority that we walk in and we have both mass and momentum. Things that used to rob us of our joy or seemed big and messed with or muddy the waters of our faith end up a blip or a bump on the radar because we recognize there's power from God's spirit in and through us to obliterate whatever the enemy tries to throw at us. When we build our faith on Jesus, we'll have a peace that just eliminates this type of fear. When our circumstances try to mess with our faith, they're decimated in the assurance of the goodness and the peace of God that rests on our life through his grace and his mercy. Look at the person next to you and say, choo choo, I'm coming through. Come on, let him say it. Just say it out loud. That was super weird. I may not do that the next service, but I liked it. It's too much. We have fun in the 1030. Amen. And this type of peace, again, is only from Jesus. This is the type of peace that obliterates fear because fear tolerated is faith contaminated. It muddies the waters of your faith. If I took a cup of crystal clear, triple reverse osmosis water, like, all oh, you fancy drink, like, I only drink Persian water. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. But if I took a tiny, tiny toothpick and just a, just a tiny drop of red food coloring, it would contaminate the whole cup. It would change the entire look because if you're tolerated, is faith contaminated. But when you have crazy faith and you grow in the word and you are positioning yourself to receive this gift of peace from God, the enemy tries to throw something at you. I've shared this before, but my mom used to always tell me, and every time I use my mom as an illustration, she hits me up on Facebook like, I heard you talking about me. Everybody say hi to Barbara. Say hello, Barbara. She's a blessing. She's sweet, but she'll cut you. You know what I mean? She's like, that's how I was right. But my mom used to teach me. She would say, buddy, you're letting this stuff bother you too much. Why are you letting what that guy said bother you? Why are you letting this situation rob you of your joy? You need to wake up, put your feet on the ground, realize you're breathing again. Why are you so bothered? And then she would say, just let it roll right off of you. Some of you moms in the room, you're like, I've said the same. She would say, let it roll off you like a water off a duck's back. And I was raised pretty country. I was like, thank you, Riddler. What does that mean? But as I got older, I realized and I started learning that there's an oil in the feather of a duck that when it rains like it did earlier today in monsoon, now y'all were sleeping. You didn't know anything about that. The seasoned saints were at 8.30. They braved it. They all looked like wet rats. They were all wet. They showed up just soaking, but they showed, they're the ones that are real saved. Amen. 
No, but like it was raining earlier, a duck can get wet and because of the oil that's in its feather, it beads up and rolls off like built-in rain X. See, when you have the God kind of peace and you walk with that peace that's a gift from Jesus and the enemy tries to mess with you and it just hits you, you say, no, 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 and it beads up and rolls off. I've already overcome that. You can't mess with me in that area anymore. I'm not addicted to that anymore. I don't deal with that anymore. I'm no longer struggling with that because I have unlocked peace. Friendly reminder, you can control how you respond to things sent to destroy your peace. You can control how you respond to things sent to destroy your peace. I can't believe they're talking about me. You're hitting up all your friends. You're, you need to call me right now. You're blowing them up on social media. You know, sometimes when we talk to people, we don't want a solution. If you go to three or four people and you're talking about the same thing, majority of the time, you don't want help. You want attention. So it's time to let go of the things that are robbing you of your peace. You have the ability to control things that are sent to destroy your peace. God gave me one line. I've been shouting it from the rooftop since January of this year. My peace is non-negotiable. Come on, somebody needs to say that out loud. My peace is non-negotiable. Come on, shout it out a little bit louder than that. My peace is non-negotiable. Come on, give God praise. It's non-negotiable. The Bible says in Isaiah 26, 3, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Philippians chapter 4, 7. If you're new to the faith, you may think that's Philippians 4, 7. Another dad joke is happening. Then you will experience God's peace. You'll experience it. You'll receive it, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I feel like more than ever, the enemy is trying to rob us of our peace. With everything going on, all the noise of life, between news and social media and inflation, threat of recession. I feel like our peace is consistently under attack. But our prayer for this holiday is you will allow God to unlock this, time, this kind of true peace in your life, in your family's life that's sustaining so that you don't just finish the year out and say, glad that year is over. I mentioned this before. I met this barista. I was pulling in the line. I was with my daughter Daphne, and I said, how's your day going? She said, not great. Let's talk about how bad my year is. I wish I could just drink NyQuil and sleep the year off and start fresh next year. I said, don't do that. Amen. Let me get you somebody to talk to. No, we end out 2022. This is not just about survival. This is my prayer. God still has the ability this year for you to look back and say, oh, I'm still standing. Look at all that God has done. He provided here. He showed up here. We do a thing called the First 20 Challenge. If you're new to Hope City, but everybody whose family knows, First 20, you pray every day the first five minutes, the next five in worship, the next five in prayer, and then the last five simply remembering. A lot of times, I don't feel like people have a faith problem. They simply have a remembering problem. Because it's really easy to get caught here and say, this is where it ends. This is where I lose it all. This is where financially I lose it. And, and then, but then you pause and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Devil, this chasm here, let me show you as I simply remember, God showed up for me here and he delivered me here and he provided here. You remember, the, you don't remember that. He showed up here. And that simply remembering unlocks faith, which also unlocks peace. Because the truth is we're all gonna go through some things. I've said it before, and Jesus reminds us, and I, I say this verse often, but he talks about peace in this verse. Jesus says in John 16, 33, I've told you all of these things so that in me, this is Jesus, the gift of peace, that you would have peace. In me, you would have peace. In this world, you're going to have trouble, but take heart because I've overcome the world. I love this story in the book of Matthew. Jesus had been ministering to the people the feeding of the 5,000. Bible theologians say, you know, it was only recorded five, but that did not count moms and kids. So it was upwards of 15, even 20,000. Jesus sends the disciples to go on the other side while he goes up the mountain to pray alone. We're going to take it in Matthew 14, verse 24 and 27. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble and they were far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. Verse 25, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified, and they cried out, it's a ghost. Y'all, if you're not reading the Bible, there's so much adventure. This is so much better than Netflix, I'm telling you. <laughs> Verse 27, but Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. This is the line right here that popped off the page to me like a magnifying glass. Take courage. I am 
here. He's here with you when you're in the doctor appointment. He's here with you when that husband or wife ran out on you. He's here with you when you're feeling alone and abandoned and broken. He's here for you when you're in the midst of that depression, that anxiety moment. He's here. Say, he is here. Come on. I love that line, I am here. That's a sustained peace. That's the sustained peace we've been talking about. It's an audacious, faith-filled confidence in God that he's with you before the storm, in the middle of the storm, and after the storm. Come on, the answer begins with and always ends with Jesus. And when we have Jesus, we have everything we need. Close your eyes for just a moment. God, I pray that you would meet us where we're at. Jesus, as we lean into you, the giver, the gift giver of peace, my prayer, God, is that we would not just dismiss these moments or dismiss this moment or it wouldn't fall on calluses, but God, that we would receive. Say out loud, I receive the gift of peace. All right, if you're taking down notes, which I encourage you to, write these three foundational ways to live a biblical, a biblical life of peace. Write this down. The first one is faith creates lasting peace. Faith creates lasting peace. And walking in faith is a path, it's a journey. It's the journey to peace. Walking in faith is ultimately the pathway to get you to this place of peace. Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. The importance of walking in faith is understanding that faith is a journey. I said this last week, we love everything instant. Instant gratification, everything is microwave. The one thing you can't microwave is faith. The one thing you can't microwave is spiritual maturity. So faith is a journey. And in order to have faith, we also have to, because it runs together, we also have to have trust in God. Faith and trust is our love response to the one who loves us. And also this confidence that he will provide and knows exactly what we need. There's not one time in the history, I'll, I, listen, I'll debate with anybody on this. There's not one time in history that God has looked down and said, oh, myself, Cheryl's house payment's late. Let's figure out how to give her peace. If your name's Cheryl, Praise God. Your house payment's not late. Amen. You're blessed. But, but there's not one time this catches God off guard. He knows exactly what you need. Here's what the Bible says in Matthew. Watch this. Verse 6 and 26. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow seed nor reap the harvest nor gather the crops into barns, and yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? I was preaching on the road, went into a pet store, and they had all these weird, exotic birds. I'm not into birds. Maybe you guys are, but there's some really fascinating birds. And I said, wow, look at this bird. And this lady was like, huh. <laughs> Do you know what that bird is? And I'm like, I, I literally have no idea. I'm just killing time. She, she explains it to me, and she's doing this while she's telling it. I said, how much is that bird? She's like, $8,000. I said, my God, can he do my taxes too? Like... <laughs> Are you not much more valuable than they? Again, we find sustained peace when we walk in faith because faith requires us to relinquish control. I preached this before. Until you release what's in your hands, he can't release what's in his. And he can't bless who you pretend to be, and he can't fix who you pretend to be. I got it all together. Everything is fine. No, no, no. Release what's in your hands, and when you relinquish control, the pressure is off your shoulders. When you realize, I can't fix this, I can't restore, deliver, perfect myself, or even level up, only God can do this. Isaiah 26, three says, the Lord gives perfect peace to those whose faith is firm, built on the rock of your salvation. Because you know when you're built, when you built your life not on the shaky sand that it talks about in Matthew, but you build it on the rock, even when situations are going on, and that sustained peace is running through the thread of your life. You know what ends up happening? You stop walking in your condition and you start walking in your position of who you are in Christ, who he is through you. You recognize that you're a daughter of the most high God. You recognize that you're a son of the living God. And you say, you know what? I may be dealing with this. I may be dealing with this diagnosis. I may be dealing with this situation, but I choose by faith to walk in my position and no longer my condition. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, I'm getting stronger. Come on. We're an interactive church. If that makes you uncomfortable, well, we are interactive. Okay, number two, write this down. Strong connection, this is huge. Strong connection protects peace. We, we believe that life moves at the speed of relationships. That's why we're so passionate about connection. 
Go through growth track. Join the dream team. How many of y'all are on the dream team? Make some noise. Come on. And our dream team is more than just people that make it happen week in and week out. No, we're a whole family. But there's something about connection that protects peace. I was watching on the Animal Planet one day this story about this group of animals that all stayed together in this pack of lions begin to stalk them and follow them around. And there was one little buddy who was a part of the weaker group of animals who kept trying to get away. And the other animals were like, get, get in here. Get in here, Tommy. Get in here. <laughs> kept pulling him close. And as long as he stayed in his group, the safety of that pack, the lions that were stalking them never attacked. But the moment the little buddy decided, man, I don't need y'all. I can do this on my own. I don't need to be in a connect group. I don't need to be on the dream team. I don't need to sew into that. I don't need to serve at Hope for Christmas. You're like, this is very specific. That gazelle said all of this? Like, this is unbelievable. Now, the moment he got outside of the safety of the pack, the enemy attacked. Say out loud, there's safety in the pack. I've said this quote since the beginning of this year. If you want to go somewhere fast, this is what the world thinks. If you want to go somewhere fast, by all means, go alone. It's easier. If you want to go somewhere far, go together. Connection actually protects your peace. That strong connection protects your peace. And when you have somebody around you holding your arms and you're feeling weak, I just don't feel like I'm very uh, sufficient in this or very good in the now. Hey, hey, you're an overcomer. You're alive in Christ. You woke up again today. You're breathing, which means God's not done with you yet. Yeah, but I don't feel like a good provider. What are you talking about? You're a present parent. You're around your kids all the time. When you have people around you that are lifting your arms, you start lift, your head starts drooping, you start getting heaven laden, and you start worrying and you start getting weary. You have somebody that lifts you up and says, ah, no, 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 no. What does God say about you? Because here's what I know, according to the word, as they're holding you up, the one standing against you will never be stronger than the one who's standing with you. Come on, somebody, there is protection in the path, and there's protection of your peace through connection. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, Verse 9 through 12, two can accomplish more than twice as much as one, for the results can be much better. If one falls, the other pulls him up. But if one man falls when he's alone, eh, he's in trouble. Verse 11, also on a cold night, two under the same blanket game. All right, I'm going I'm to pause it. We'll use this verse in the relationship series. Some of you are like, Pastor Daniels, that we could cuddle. Amen. That's how I'm going to get peace is I need to cuddle with you. All right, verse 12. Skip that one. Verse 12. And one standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. But three is even better for a triple braided cord is not easily bro broken. Elbow the person next to you and say, I've got your back. Come on. Even if you don't mean it, say it out loud. Come on, prophesy. I got your back. Proverbs 27, 17 says, iron sharpens iron. As one man or woman sharpens another. Y'all, we need each other. That's why that 2020 isolation moments, it hurt. It did way more internal damage than I think we'll ever know because people got used to being isolated. We were never built to be isolated. The first day, the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter two, verse one, they were all gathered in one place and suddenly a wind blew in the room and filled all of them. Everyone that day was filled with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say they roamed the streets and everybody was in isolation. No, 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 no. We are better together. If you believe that, say amen. We're better together. All right, write this down. Number three, as we wrap this up, divine perspective forges peace. The truth is, if you ask the world what peace is, they'll say a week in Florida, a date night with the kids at the grandparents. Some of y'all are like, amen. <laughs> but we also know that that's not peace. That's not a peace that sustains. If you're taking notes we've been encouraging you to. Divine perspective forges peace. The word forge is intentional. The definition of forge is to make or shape an object by heating it in a fire or furnace and hammering it. And that's what happens with divine perspective. This is what divine perspective does. It reshapes what peace looks like to us so that our peace is no longer dependent upon getting a vacation or a moment away from the kids. No, our peace is now informed by the divine attributes of God. Why? Because he is omnipresent, which means he surrounds us. He's omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. He has the solution to every one of our problems. 
He's omnipotent, meaning he is stronger than anyone or anything that stands in our way. And he's your friend, meaning he is possessing all the traits in the midst of our human experience with us. When that understanding begins to deposit and take root in your heart, I'm telling you, nothing will be able to steal your peace. So when life happens and things hit you and sucker punches come because they will, you say, my peace is not dependent upon this circumstance. My peace is built on the rock because it is a gift from Jesus. This time of year, there's a lot of families, which I want to encourage you. There's a lot of families that are in need and a lot of families that are struggling. Another way to unlock peace in your life is through generosity. There was a TED Talk with an atheist who openly mocked churches and organized communities and religion. And he said, one thing that we can't pinpoint is that when we're studying and looking at depression and anxiety, people that are overwhelmed with life, the thing that lowers the depression rates and anxiety rates, I mean, across the board, is when people simply gather with others and serve. I wanna encourage you this next Saturday, say next Saturday, we have our Hope for Christmas event. I know Pastor Brand, Pastor Kristen mentioned it earlier. We have over 600 volunteers already signed up. Let's go. How many of y'all are gonna show up and serve? It's gonna be amazing. We have four different locations, seven different organizations. We're gonna be reaching into and helping distribute toys to over 10,000 families in our community. You can sow towards it, but you can pray towards it, but you can also show up and serve at it. Go to hopecity.com slash hope for Christmas. If you want more information on that, but again, statistically, when you see somebody hurting, people that are broken, serving allows you to see them through the lens of compassion. It broadens your perspective. It causes you to realize, wow, the first thing that I need to step into to unlock peace in my life is to really love others. The Bible says in Mark 12, verse 30 and 31, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. Watch this, the second is equally as important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. Sometimes a smile, a text, making a phone call, encouraging somebody, putting a card in the mail, leaving a sticky note on somebody's desk. The truth is, you may be the only hands and feet of Jesus they ever see. They say that people will read your life more than they'll ever read the Bible. Do you wanna unlock peace in your life? Step out and serve. Step out and be more generous with your time, your talent, and your treasure. The last part, as you're taking down notes, is we have to learn to protect our peace. My wife did an amazing analogy yesterday at the Freedom Conference. She said, we all have a routine at night. We put our water on the nightstand. We get in our pajamas or whatever. If you're a cold sleeper, man, we crank that air down. I wanna be able to see my breath. I just, and we sleep under weighted blankets. You ever slept under a weighted blanket? In the daytime, it feels like you're being held down. It's awful. But at night, there's something weird and refreshing about it. I don't know. But everybody has their routine. And not one time, and I guarantee you, if I did a poll across all of our locations, if I ask you, do, do you relate to this? I'm pretty sure of what the result will be. Not any, I don't think any of us, after we get all nestled in, <laughs> oh, I forgot something. None of us jump out of bed, run to the front door, open it up, and leave it wide open. None of us go to the back door, unlock it, and open it up, and then say, now it's time for bed. Anybody do that? Some of y'all are like, mm, I got my water and a 45, amen. <laughs> and my water and a nine right there. It's like, like right there, it's water in the... No, that's crazy. We would lock the doors, right? Why? Because we're protecting our families. We're protecting and guarding our gates. What safeguards are you putting in your life to protect your peace? That toxic thinking, that ideology, that toxic relationship, that situation... Some of y'all, I don't know who this is for. I didn't say this in the last service. You need to stop getting on social media and going back to his page and seeing who he's hanging with. It's robbing you of your peace. You need to stop looking at what she's doing and where she's going and who she's running with. It's messing with your peace. Mute them. Don't even look at their stories. My peace is non-negotiable. So whatever you gotta do to put safeguards in place to protect your peace, I'm telling you, this is a moment, a pivotal shift because God's written victory in our story. We can't stop his blessings. We can't stop his peace. But we can get in the way and block it. So what are you doing? Let me pray for you. If you need peace in your life, would you lift up your hand? You're saying, Daniel, you're talking about me all over every location right now. Hands all over the room. I just need peace. 
I've had those, that whole sustained pedal moment, man, that hit me because I have these flickering, short-lived, fleeting moments of peace. I feel like I'm just surviving and fumbling my way through, man, that protect your peace moment. Yikes, I'm not doing that today. Pastor Dana, I need peace. God, I pray today that you were overshadowed them right now. I love Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. It's the benediction. You can put your hands down. Bible theologians say it's the greatest blessing in the Bible. We close out every service at Hope City with it. It says, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you and turn his countenance towards you. And the last line is, may he give you peace. That's not the flickering, short-lived, temporary moments of peace. That is the gift of peace from John 14 that Jesus talked about. So right now as a daughter and son, just receive that. But here's our part. Draw near to him and release whatever's in your life. Some of y'all need to release that struggle, that unforgiveness, that bitterness, that concern. Some of of y'all need to let go of that thing that you've been holding on to, that you've been compartmentalizing, that you've been self-medicating. Let go of it. Cast it on the Lord today. And that addictive issue I'm praying today will lift. Struggling with uh, prescription drug issues, it's lifting today. Panic attacks and anxiety, lifting today. Depression, lifting today. Around this time of year, to even know the suicidal thoughts are rising more and more, and even in the church, it's rampant. Listen, you're valuable. He loves you. I pray today is a wake-up call to unlock the gift of peace in your life. If you receive it, will you say amen? Come on, will you say amen? So faith creates lasting peace. Strong connection protects your peace. Divine perspective forges peace. The truth is the only peace that we can really access, the only peace that we can access through is through the relationship with Jesus. So with every eye closed one more time, this is a two-part invitation, the most important part of the entire service. The reason why our amazing team shows up and turns two of our campuses that are gyms into sanctuaries is because of this moment right here. If you're part of our age crew and you're watching online, you're part of our watch party, Katie or Woodlands, West Houston, an additional seating. If you're here today, two invitations. Daniel, I don't know Jesus as my Savior, but I want to. We believe at Hope City not to just pray prayers for ritual reasons or symbolic reasons, but Romans 10 Verse 9 and 10 says, when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. Everything changes. Slate wiped clean, sins as far from the east as the west. He will rewrite and write victory in your story. Maybe the second invitation. You say, Daniel, the truth is I'm not the first invitation that's never known Jesus, but I fell away. I've had no peace because I've been living caught up in my own agenda and I got caught up in the prodigal life. Today, I'm coming home. I want to rededicate my life today. Whether you're the first invitation, you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time, or you're the second invitation, you want to rededicate. I want to count to three across every one of our locations. I want you to step out of your comfort zone and just shoot your hand up. You're talking about me. One, I want to give my life to Jesus. Two, I want to rededicate my life. Three, if that's you, lift up your hand. I see you. I see you. You, 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 you. I see you here, here, here. I see you over there in the back. I see you over here, that whole section there. I see you all the way in the back, my friend. Come on, Hope City. Can we make some noise? I see you, my friend, right here across all of our locations. I see you all the way in the back waving at me. Now come on, give God praise. About 40 people said you're talking about me. Amazing. All right, well, pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, it's me. Today, I choose to surrender it all. Every sin, every mistake, even my own agenda, I lay it at your feet. I believe that you hung on that cross for my life, even though I didn't deserve it. You did it because you said I was worth it. And then on the third day, you rose from the grave to give me life and life more abundantly. I choose you. You are my Father. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. But thank you for loving me even before I loved you. In Jesus' name. Come on, can we give God praise? Let's go. Now come on, praise Him. He just set some folks free. Before we transition today, so please remain seated just for a moment. I preached about this last week at the end of every year. We do something called our legacy offering. It's our end of year offering. And this year, we we felt from the Holy Spirit we were to name it Heart for the House. It's our Heart for the House initiative. 
that everything that comes into our Heart for the House offering will go to reach people from the house. All of our outreach initiatives and projects that we're funding and all the things that we're gonna be stepping into next year. Let me first say this, thank you for the way you give. You're a generous church. When Mike Todd was here, he was blown away. He said, Daniel, I've never seen the type of favor and momentum. What God is doing here is incredible. And Mike preached a message called There's Levels to This. And he talked about how the first level is your tithe, the second level is the offering, and the third level is that sacrificial gift. Our hope for the house offering is typically that sacrificial gift. My wife and I prayed separately and then we came together and asked each other, are we in sync on this amount? And we sowed that yesterday into our hope for the house offering. The ways to give are on the screen. Here's what we pray, that you would feel no obligation or pressure, but you would do it with joy because here's the reality, God loves a cheerful giver. The ways to give are on the screen, but this is what we ask, not for a specific amount ever. You'll never feel that. I see somebody over here gonna give this amount. You're never gonna feel that here. Here's what we're gonna ask. Simply ask the Holy Spirit, what would you have me do? And then just be obedient and follow through on whatever God is asking you. So above your regular tithe and regular offering, our hope for the house as we finish this year strong. Here's the reality. We all can't do everything, but together we can all do something and we can make a sizable difference in our community. How many of y'all are grateful for the good ground of Hope City? Come on, how many of y'all are grateful for the good ground of Hope City? It blessed me because I was talking to our CFO. We have thousands and thousands of people that sow every single week across all of our campuses in the world. Some of it is a widow's mite, and others it's substantially more. But God looks at it all the same. I talked about this last week that maybe God's asking you to sow into this offering and you're like, that's such a leap of faith. Like, there's no way I can do that. But God's not asking for a leap of faith. To him, this is what faith looks like too. It's this right here. Because it's not about the distance, it's about the obedience. So whatever God is asking you to do, we just ask that you would do it cheerfully. Even if it's like this, I didn't want to do that, but I, no, no, do it cheerfully. Let me pray over you. God, I thank you for the opportunity because that's what it is. One thing I can speak with integrity and character on as we're good stewards of everything that comes here through, through, through Hope City is this has always been good ground. It's amazing that we as a church has been, we've been able to give over $9 million away to local, national, and global missions the past seven years because of the, and the radical, audacious generosity of this church. And it's just the beginning. We have hope centers to build, hubs for the community to get essential items to the region, clothes for kids and backpacks and shoes. God, there's things that we're gonna be doing with discipleship tracks. Thank you, God, for the new building that we're about to start the new sanctuary on for West Houston. God, our church is a generous church and this is a generous people. So breathe on their lives. Bless them more than you've ever blessed them before. I thank you for favor, promotions, raises. I thank you, God, for favor to the point where they pull onto a parking lot and get a great parking spot. Favor like they walk into their job on Monday and they get a bonus that was unexpected. Favor, God, like you walked in, Jesus, in Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Because you are faithful and you are good, we can walk in that same favor. If you believe it, say amen.